Hello everybody, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. This is part two of the study, The Bible Says. I hope you go back and watch part one. I hope you watch this entire series from the beginning. In part one, we established that from the Bible, only the Bible, that um, God is the uncaused cause. Uh, there's a law called the law of cause and effect. Everything must have a cause. And if you continue asking, what's the cause of that? Well, then what's the cause of that? Eventually, with an infinite regression, we, it begs the question, well, there must be an uncaused cause, and that is what we call God. The, the God is eternal. He doesn't, he doesn't have a cause. Nothing created God. That is the unique uh, quality, that being eternal, that it belongs only to God. Uh, and this God that we find in the Bible is triune one God, and yet three persons still making up only one God. Uh, the Bible refers to it as the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Also refers to the Godhead as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But we showed in the first study that God is triune, and God said he would make man in his own image. So let's examine now exactly how he made man. Genesis 2, 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Well, there, there's so much in this one verse. I'm, I'm trying to keep these uh, each video short, so I'll condense my thoughts here. But in this verse, we see the physical creation of, of man uh, the, from matter. And he used the material, the dust of the ground, and he formed the man. And yet, it wasn't a man yet. Uh, then it says, and breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. Uh, when God breathed into the nostrils of this man that he formed from the dust of the ground, the breath of God was the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit entered this man that God was forming and it says, and man became a living soul at that moment. So here we have the three components that makes up the one man. And man is triune like God is triune. I'm one man, and yet I'm body, soul, and spirit. So here we have, from the dust of the ground, the physical part of man was made. The spirit of man was actually the Holy Spirit of God breathed into this man and then it says man became a living soul now the word soul can have more than one meaning you can say well there was an accident and an earthquake and a hundred souls were lost so sometimes the word soul just refers to as a person but sometimes we the word soul refers to uh, the soul of a person which is their identity, their consciousness, their mind. And uh, so you have all three mentioned in this verse. And in this one verse, we can see the triunity of man uh, modeled after God. Uh, so, but the body of man really serves as a transportation uh, vehicle. It's like if I go get in my car and drive around, the car is transporting me around. Um, my body is transporting me around. The body is containing my identity, which is my mind or soul. That is my true identity. 
and then the spirit, what is the spirit of, of man? Well, in Adam's case, and in the case of Eve, who is formed from Adam's rib, as the Bible says, uh, the, the spirit in Adam was the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. So uh, now let's look at Genesis 3, 3 and 4. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. So Eve is aware that God warned them to not eat from that tree or they would die. And the serpent, which is the devil, is making a direct contradiction to God, saying, no, you will not surely die. So Eve is in a position to decide who would she, she would believe. And contrary to what most people think, the very first sin was not eating from the tree. That's the sin of disobedience and rebellion. The, the, the first sin was the sin of unbelief. Eve did not believe God. Instead, she chose to believe the devil, that they would not die if they eat from the tree. Now, why would they want to eat from the tree? Because the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil would give Adam and Eve understanding of right and wrong. And if they could understand right and wrong, they could use their own judgment and make their own decisions, and they could be independent from God and, in a way, be their own gods. So that was the temptation. That was what they were seeking. And uh, But they were warned, if you truly do this, you will die. Uh, now let's, let's look at Romans 5, 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And in 2 Corinthians 1, 9, we had the sentence of death in ourselves. So the result of um, Adam and Eve not believing God, choosing instead to believe the devil, eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, instead of relying on the tree of life. You see, the tree of life is, is a picture of Jesus Christ. He was hung on the tree to give us life everlasting. Uh, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is a picture of the law, the knowledge of the law or right and wrong. And uh, they chose to go under the law. And uh, so, but their sin, their uh, sin of unbelief, which is the, the, the sin today that uh, the, the world must uh, uh, repent of, uh, the only sin that's not paid for on the cross is the sin of unbelief. We must believe on Jesus Christ in order uh, for us to receive the gift of eternal life. But the, the sin of Adam and Eve, that affected them in two ways. One, now they were sinners. And two, now they were mortal. They had the sentence of death. And this sentence of death was passed down genetically through all the generations. We've inherited this sentence of death, this mortality. Um, every person uh, at some point in our lives were told the, the hard, cruel fact of life that someday you will die. Every person must die one day. And so this sentence of death is on all of humanity, and we've inherited it. It's a genetic, and it's passed down through the generations from Adam and Eve. Uh, now, 
God said that they would die if they ate from the tree, but they did live about 800 years or so. Uh, people lived a long time in the beginning because the effect of sin hadn't taken its full toll yet. But the, uh, the moment they ate from the tree, they became mortal and they began to die. They would age and they would have this suffering that comes with, with being mortal and, and the sickness and disease and, and the vulnerability to death, eventually death. <clears throat> uh, but the Bible says that they would die that day. Uh, how could they, that be true, that they died, would die that day if they lived 800 years? Um, I believe it's because uh, when they sinned, the Spirit of God that was breathed into them withdrew. It's, it's kind of like the Spirit of God is here, here's, here's God, and here's His Holy Spirit breathed into them, and the Spirit of God is in them, and this is their connection to God. It's like being connected to the Internet like being plugged into an energy source uh, for to uh, turn your lamp on. Um, and, and because of sin, God had to withdraw because sin and God are incompatible. This caused a separation. God withdrew his spirit. So man is left with a stub of a, like a dead spirit, but not a living spirit. Uh, I have a video titled that uh, zombies really do walk among us. And it's because uh, unless we get born again spiritually, we are the walking dead spiritually. Uh, living bodies, living functioning mind or soul, and but a dead spirit. Uh, and this is uh, passed down get through generation after generation to all humanity. Um, uh, dead spirits and uh, mortality. So it's it's kind of like uh, an umbilical cord being severed. So now you're separated from God, or being getting unplugged and disconnected from God. And how do you remedy that? Well, you you've got to reestablish that connection. And that's what I'm going to talk about next time on the Bible says. Thank you for watching. I look forward to your comments. Bless you in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus.